Good morning, everybody. Hello, um, hello. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for joining us. I'm Saquon. I'm Scott Ingen. And who's this? Dylan Boat, obviously. Um, <laughs> okay, don't forget, before we get started, before we talk about weather and what Dylan was talking about for us this morning, uh, don't forget, you can always watch this, listen to this on your own time. You can visit mm -hmm. our Inform YouTube channel. You can find us on your favorite podcast podcast platform. And you can find us on inform.com slash podcast under inform minute. I think I have that like completely memorized. You got it. I it's like, like it. ingrained in my brain now. <laughs> okay, let's talk about what you were talking about. Yeah. You were talking about like snowboards and a lot of other things. But not the snowboard that's Yeah, you're... right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ride down yeah, the hill. Yeah. How to properly measure snowfall is talking about our first news this morning. It's good to have a snowboard, so not like the actual ground, because the ground yeah. is uneven. Yeah. And you want to have a snowboard, is what we call it, just a piece of wood, uh -huh. preferably a light color. Yeah. And where a new snow falls on it, you uh -huh. measure on yeah. that snowboard, because uh, if you measure on the pavement, usually those like roads are treated. Yeah. And of yeah. course, then snow melts right away when it falls down. A snowboard is the way to go. So yeah, I was talking about that this morning, mm -hmm. because we had a snowfall yesterday. And now we have a snowfall again today and then <laughs> yeah. tomorrow. It's not a lot. It's just a few flurries. Yeah. And these annoying flurries, I think uh, Lydia was calling them nuisance flurries yeah. all morning this morning. And that's yeah. pretty much what they are. They'll continue uh, today, tomorrow, and guess what? We're not going to see any sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't seen the sun in forever. Like, yeah. do you guys remember the last time we saw the sun? Does it no. exist? Yeah, yeah, does it the sun exist? exist? Especially during this time of year? Probably not. So we're still looking at cloudy skies. Cool. Uh, high temperatures in the 20s, but by the end of the week, we'll have high temperatures in the single digits. Mm. So, That's just, yeah, wow, winter that is one hurt. Uh, I took that one personally there. Yeah, it's going to um, get cold. Get your jackets out if you haven't already. Your yes. Big gloves. Yes. Your, uh, oil, and your, yeah, whatever. There was one morning, Dylan, where you talked about, like, um, you know, emergency kits in your yeah. car. Make sure you have that ready, yeah. too. Um, I think that was really, <laughs> when Dylan talked about that, I was like, I got to get mine ready because yeah. we need that the yeah. cold front. And there's a lot of accidents now, fresh snowfall yeah. and stuff like that. Roads yeah. are slippery. So I don't yeah. know if we'll probably talk about the story in a bit, but I mean, there was a bunch of accidents just reported yeah. yesterday mm -hmm. in Minnesota, like 300, yeah. like yep. five hour yep. period. Don't so underestimate those roads, just, guys. Yeah, bring your, bring your kit with you, yeah. your warm clothes, maybe yeah. an extra blanket in that kit. Some food even, yeah. water, have that stuff. Exactly. On so, all right, Dylan, Sweet. thank you. Thank you, sir. Yep. All right, um, straight ahead, we want to let you guys know that deputies are investigating a body that was found in a ditch right by uh, Grand Forks. In fact, it was about 45 minutes away from Grand Forks. Uh, it happened in Northwood, North Dakota. And um, all we know so far is the Grand Forks County Sheriff's Office got a call out there at around 1030 yesterday morning, um, and they found a body. Victim obviously has not yet been identified um, because, you know, family members need to be notified first. But um, once I'm sure that information is out, I'm sure some sort of autopsy will begin. Yep. All right. Uh, we're also following that grain elevator fire continues yeah. to burn this morning, I believe three days after it originally happened. Yeah. Um, and the firefighters there yeah. um, in the community say that this is gonna be the case probably for a few more days because um, we talked to the uh, fire chief in Edgley, mm -hmm. Steve Powers, and he says much of that structure, that uh, grain elevator was made of wood. And then he described the grain and wood as hot coals, yeah. which are keeping this thing right. smoldering yeah. and burning. Of course, those big flames that you would expect with a fire aren't there anymore. They've knocked it down. Right. It's all contained but they can't get everything put out exactly. it, they just essentially have to wait for it to burn itself out while monitoring it and so while all that's going on um, they're gonna keep those roads around that area closed down so if you live in that area or passing through Edgeley just uh, make sure you you're aware that those roads might not be open as you're used to yeah exactly um, okay, we also know North Dakota, state of North Dakota right now is urging people to get their flu shots um, because right now Almost every state is seeing an uptick in flu cases. Um, but focusing a little bit closer to home, uh, we know that North Dakota has already reported two child deaths, um, and that's due to influenza. And, and I know, um, you know, we talk about flu season every year, but it does have very serious consequences. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that uh, the North Dakota Department of Health is really trying to get people to just, um, you know, get their flu shots. Uh, we know that there are currently 182 current cases of the flu in the state right now, um, and of those, four people have been yeah, and it's pretty so. easy to get a flu shot too. Totally. Most of your I basic, got one on TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's pretty easy, so just uh, find a spot close to you, go in, get that done. Yeah. It doesn't take long. Yeah. So help and do your part. Yeah. All right, so also, um, we're talking about a new theater for Fargo. Mm -hmm. um, it's one step closer to becoming a reality. The Fargo City Commission unanimously approved a development agreement to construct a parking garage, which would be the city's responsibility as part of this mm -hmm. project. Now that garage would have several hundred parking spots, and then the building itself will have 145 apartment units 
and be home to the Fargo Moorhead Community Theater. So this is kind of a multi-purpose mm -hmm. use right. complex, which yeah. is really cool. Um, the city will be responsible for paying about $16 million of this project, so a big project, but uh, once it's done, they're expecting that the money made from it right. will pretty much pay for their investment, so. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, okay. We also know the 400 building in the heart of downtown Fargo. Anyone who lives downtown, anyone who is in this area, you guys know exactly what building I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but that is now one of three subsidized housing units that's up for sale right now. Um, so again, this has been, <laughs> that building was made in like 1914. So it's, yeah. it's a pretty old uh, building and it's actually one of the smaller ones. Actually, it's the smallest of the three buildings um, that are going on sale. Again, uh, those two other buildings being in Grand Forks and Devil's Lake. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the 400 building is about 10,000 square feet. And I know I say it's the smallest of the three. In my opinion, that's pretty big. Um, so uh, yeah, if you want to buy or if you want to maybe pitch an offer, um, we know that the three buildings are going to cost around $5 million altogether. All right. We kind of mentioned this off the top, but with the uh, major snow, snowfall that we got this past mm -hmm. weekend yeah. and the flurries we continue to see, um, you need to be safe out there when you're yeah. driving. The Minnesota State Patrol um, is reporting that they saw... Over 300 crashes yesterday morning so alone. That is so crazy. And, you know, and uh, that was all within about a five-hour period, kind of in the morning hours, I believe. So, like, just be careful out yeah. there, folks. Yeah. They reported there was also, on top of those 300 crashes or so, like 67 just generic, like, spin-outs, and mm -hmm. then a three jackknife semis. The only good thing is that nobody was reported seriously injured right. or, or died from any of these. Yeah. But, you know, you never know in an accident, things can change quickly. So oh, just be safe out there, folks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, we also know this is a really good feel-good story. Um, four people are being honored for helping save a man's life right near I-29 in Fargo. Um, so we know that was 25-year-old Alyssa Red Day, uh, Highway Patrol Trooper Cameron McCann, and Deputy Ross Krauss. 23-year-old Nash Heminger is going to be honored a little bit later as well. Um, Heminger and Red Day were driving. They came across this man who was in distress, which happened back in August. Um, and uh, McCann and Krauss were the two authorities who were on scene there. Uh, Red Day called police. Heminger... Um, was doing CPR on that man uh, until he could breathe on his own. And then they like put him in, in this recovery position um, as well on his side. So Krause and McCann continued to provide care, of course, until he could get to the hospital. But just wanted to share that and recognize the heroes um, in this story because it's, it's really important to have those feel-good stories out there as well and recognize people for their heroic doings. Yeah, you never know when your act of, of help or yeah. you know, just looking out for others so will really brave. make that big yeah. impact. So. All right, let's talk about something that's not as uh, great to talk about. This is on the national level, yeah. that uh, University of Virginia shooting. Yeah. Um, the 22-year-old man who shot and killed three people is now in police custody. Uh, this happened at the University of Virginia, as we just mentioned. Authorities say that they spotted Christopher Darnell Jones Jr. driving a car. He was about 75 miles away from the campus, the University of Virginia. That's when the officers arrested him. And authorities say that uh, Jones is a student and he was actually a former, former football player for the University of Virginia as well. Yeah, and keep in mind the three victims who were killed in that shooting were also football players at UVA. Um, mm -hmm. And we even got to hear from um, you know, an ABC News reporter today, this morning, that this suspect um, was actually on you know, the police's radar, the officer's radar, because there have been some um, you know, tips submitted in on how he might have a gun or, or several. Um, there was also like a hazing investigation going in. So there's just a lot of question right now and obviously that community is very much still mourning today. Um, also right now we are tracking some very, very disturbing uh, developments out of Iran. Um, we know that uh, an Iranian court um, has issued the first de death sentence linked to recent protests there. Um, and this is something that I had to have some discussions with, um, with, with my team uh, because we are seeing a lot of things on social media and Scott's going to touch on that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot that's kind of circulating on social media right now that we wanted to clear up. So we'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, but we know that state media there is reporting that this unknown person um, who, who was executed on Sunday took part in these protests. He's accused of um, setting fire to a government building there. And this, of course, comes, you know, after weeks of demonstrations not only in Iran but also just nationwide right um, you know uh, and this whole thing sparked when uh, Masa Amini the 22 year old woman died in police custody after she was arrested um, on some accusations of incorrectly wearing 
uh, her head covering. That is um, a law there. So they have a very strategic way of that, uh, you know, how you're supposed to wear it um, out in public. Yeah. But now touching, of course, on the social media posts. Yeah, you, you mentioned it a little bit. So as you're scrolling through your social media feeds, you're going to probably see something about this. Yeah. So we just want to clear up, you know, what's true and what's kind of misinformation mm -hmm. at this point or speculation or, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So we looked into it. We fact-checked it a little bit for you. Um, so there's a popular graphic going around that I think a lot of people are seeing that say 15,000 people in Iran have been sentenced to death. So what actually is going on is BBC News is reporting that more than 15,000 people there have been detained, mm -hmm. not sentenced there to death. There is a big difference. Yeah. There. So, um, but also on top of that, um, 2,000 people have already been charged in this thing, mm -hmm. and then 20 of those people are facing charges that are punishable by death under right. their government law. So that, you know, to an extent is happening, but not to the wide scale yes. that people are saying. Mm -hmm. So just kind of some important distinctions there as you talk about this mm -hmm. story and, and get informed on it. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, and, and mass executions in Iran are not um, unheard of, right? I mean, that's happened before, so I think that's why a lot of people were saying, hey, oh my gosh, 15,000 people are about to die right mm -hmm. here. Um, and, and that's fair, but we just wanted to make sure that we're fact-checking things as journalists, of course, and um, wanted to get that out there to you guys. Yeah. Um, also, we know this is kind of a cool story. Um, the United Nations is projecting a really big milestone in human development. Uh, it predicts that there will be 8 billion people on Earth and that the 8 billion person, 8 billion person <laughs> is going to be born tomorrow. And we were talking about it this morning, like, how are we going to know? And how are they going to react? Like, yeah. are they going to give him or her or a plaque? Or like, how is this going to all go down? Yeah, it's kind of um, wild. And I was saying, this is like a huge flex, you know? That's like a really fun fact that not everyone yeah, can say. Yeah, you can always put that out there and be like, two yeah. truths in a lie. Right, that's what I'm saying. Eight billion person born yeah, in the world. Yeah, it's just like so unfathomable to yeah, me. That's Pretty cool. Yeah, but it did take 12 years for this population to grow from 7 to 8 billion, um, and the UN projects that it will take 15 years to reach that 9 billion uh, mark because population growth is apparently slowing. Yeah. All right. Very interesting. Let's talk a little bit about Hot Mike, Don Izzo. He's got the show, 9 to 11 a.m. I'm going to be on Hot Mike today. Ooh. And Logan Campbell is hosting today. What are you going to talk about? Do um, you so we're actually not having sports um, oh. to start out because... Okay. People who know me just know, but um, <laughs> we're actually doing, maybe some of you guys can interact with this too, but um, right now my roommate, Logan is my roommate, and we're having this thermostat war, and we're trying to figure out, and I was talking to everyone's ears off about this today too, but we're trying to figure out the perfect, like happy medium between like a 72 and like a 68. You know, and like we think it's 70, but she still argues that it's too hot. So we're going to be doing a little debate there and trying to gather okay, what you Okay, what is that. your perfect thermostat temperature then? I'm going to say like 71 and 72. Okay. And I know a lot of people are like, that's that's very warm. I also did like an Instagram poll and, and gathered a lot of info there. Lydia told me that before she used to set her temperature or her th uh, thermostat at 64. And that Ooh, to me is just, cold. that's so cold. I couldn't, I could not do that. I so. usually keep it at like 68 because I think in, a, in an apartment, sometimes it gets a little warmer than yeah. the thermostat says. So if it's like 69, 70, that's kind of where I want to I'm be. just a freeze baby. So maybe I just, I don't know. Get but, a bigger blanket. Um, there is a lot. <laughs> okay, Scott. Um, <laughs> there's a lot to this debate. So yeah, I mean, definitely come join us on Hot Mike. It's yeah. going to be a fun we'll one. We'll also talk about some sports. Yeah, definitely. Tune in for the thermostat yeah. debate. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, also, don't forget, good deal going on right now. Yes. 99 cents a month for your first three months. You can get an all-access pass to inform.com. Get all sorts of stories, access to like pretty much every story we talked about this morning. Everyone, and, yeah. And <laughs> uh, weather alerts and all sorts of different stuff. So. Yeah. Definitely come join us. Um, of course, we have our 11 o'clock newscast in about two-ish hours, less than. Um, and then we, our evening coverage continues starting at 4, going to 5, 6, 9, and 10. And we will be back here tomorrow morning from 5 to 7. Hope you can join us, and otherwise have a great day, and stay warm out there. Yeah, enjoy the snow if you like snow. Bye! Bye.